So let's move on to a, a quarterback that's had great success in the playoffs. Actually, two quarterbacks that have had great success. Um, one quarterback, I think I read the stat, has 31 postseason victories. And second behind him is Joe Montana with 16. So obviously Tom Brady is who we're talking about in the second game on Sunday. Hopefully for our sake, I hope the first game on Sunday is a lot closer than people think. Um, the second game on Sunday, Tampa at New Orleans. Uh, you know, their coach, Sean Payton, still trying to figure out how to fit 55,000 people in the Superdome. I don't think that's realistic, but he wants to just give everyone vaccines tomorrow. But we got Tampa at New Orleans, the five seed Buccaneers versus the two seed New Orleans Saints. Verbin, you know, two quarterbacks that you're you're probably pretty familiar with, two two teams that you're pretty familiar with. Let's uh let's get your thoughts on this game. I mean, honestly, I, you really shouldn't have to say anything more than Breeze versus Brady. But I mean, this is uh, to me, I think this is the most attractive game for a neutral football fan by far. Uh, Cause this is just going to be a, a great football game overall. Like it, it, this could potentially be the last time we see a matchup of breeze and Brady in the playoffs. So to be able to kind of witness that part of history, you know, the, for the first time with Tom Brady, not on the Patriots, uh, it's definitely going to be cool. And the fact that, you know, they've both got weapons and, you know, seeing Tom Brady, I'm not a huge Tom Brady guy by any means, but just, you know, as a fan of football in general, watching him play with the weapons that he's got around him. I mean, it's kind of tough not to enjoy watching those games. So it's definitely going to be a, you know, I think high scoring. Um, but I think, uh, I think Brady will have the, uh, the edge in that just uh, overall. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be an exciting one. I, if there's a road team that I feel like could win this weekend, I think it is going to be Tampa. I think it took Tampa a few weeks to kind of get their footing under them early in the season. And that's why they are the fifth seed and not the divisional winner. Um, so that's kind of catching up to them as well. Now they're playing in a dome. They're not playing in the cold, like, you know, up in green Bay over in Buffalo. So it's a pretty good draw for, for Tom Brady in this matchup. Luckily for him, the Rams did pull off the upset in week in, in the wild card or else, the Bucks would be going to Green Bay and that would maybe, uh, you know, fr rattle his bones a little bit might not be the best thing for him. But no, I'm looking forward to this one too. You made me a little emotional there thinking about Brady and Breeze playing their last game against each other. These two quarterbacks, they've seemed to be the quarterbacks of their teams. Well, not the Bucks, but they've been around the entire time we've been football fans pretty much. And, you know, to kind of watch their careers un unwind and, and end is definitely a little bit rough to watch. Did you say you took the Bucks in this one? Yeah, I'm taking the Bucks. Gotcha. I mean, hey, the Saints have won the last two this season. They're 2-0 and against the Bucks this season. But we mentioned it about hitting in stride. It looks like the Bucks are hitting in stride. They got past Washington football team, who had a pretty good defense. I think the Saints defense is a little bit lower than than Washington's front seven or front four but I do think overall the Saints have a mass a really good defense I think it's going to be a lot to overcome but Tampa has the offensive weapons to overcome that Dirk if you're uh if you're wanting to Dirk can you hear me can you jump in and give me some Tampa Bay talk real quick for your Buccaneers yeah man uh we're getting some major players back uh Devin White in the the linebacking core um Last week, we saw the, the offensive line sort of come full circle. Uh, they were able to stop Chase Young and, and that pass rush of the uh, Washington football team, like you said, um, which was pretty surprising. They, I mean, not that surprising because they've been pretty solid all year, but uh, we haven't really seen them go against some fronts like that and, and hold their own. Um, you had Brady able to pick his receivers the whole the whole game um, with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and even Scotty Miller was getting a bunch of touches and uh, that receiving core is just so deep it's going to be hard I think to beat them um, Brady one thing he doesn't do is lose to the same team twice and he already lost to them twice so I think three times would be quite a stretch um, so I mean I'm a homer I'm a homer I picked uh, Tampa to win the cup on the podcast earlier. They won. Of course, I'm going to pick Tampa to win this weekend. Uh, I I think it'll be close, but I think Brady and the Bucks can get it done. I like it. And Bourbon mentioned, you know, this is what he believes the most attractive matchup for many reasons uh, across the board. It's going to be a fun one to watch. You mentioned 
uh, Brady losing two in a row or two straight to the Saints. He has actually never lost three times to the same team in any given year, um, large part due to the fact that the Jets, Dolphins, and Bills maybe weren't making the playoffs <laughs> too frequently when he was in, in New England. So uh, this is maybe the most competitive division or I guess top heavy division he's been in in his time in the NFL. So here he is playing the Saints in New Orleans with an opportunity to uh, avenge some of those uh, demons from earlier in the season. Anything else from you guys on the Brady Breeze stuff? Yeah, uh, let, let me share something real quick. Um, I mean, it's, it's absolutely hilarious just when we saw this on Monday. <laughs> oh boy, the, oh, the the Brady. Brady. <laughs> it's Drew's dad. Drew's yeah, dad. that's Drew's dad. Shout out, that's, that's shout Mr. out Brewer. Mr. Brewer. Yeah, the Breeze one looks a little too convincing there. That's a, that's a little too good. And it looks like Tom Brady just pushed Santa off the roof, and now he's Santa Claus. He actually does look like Santa. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Tom Brady still looks good in that picture. With how, even He looks 80 and still looking good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Drew Brees is like a retired older. librarian. What's, what skincare is he using? I like it. I like it. And that's a great picture. And I'm pretty sure he actually posted that picture too. So yeah, it said said it was from his Twitter. I think that's just so funny. Magic can grow his beard out in four days. Tom Brady should definitely be growing a playoff beard right now. Cause that, that does look pretty good. Playoff beards. I love it. I mean, (laughs) you talk about social media and chase Claypool and Juju. I think Tom Brady is up there with some of the best social media in the game. So it is what it is. I love it. Justin, um, would you say this is probably one of the best wild card teams that you've seen in recent history? For the Bucks, you're saying? For the Bucks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when it comes down to it, I think the only reason they're a wild card team is it took them about four or five weeks to really get their footing, right? If they could have started off a little bit, and they didn't have an off season either. Like they had all these pieces and a new quarterback in no off season. And Christensen's there as the quarterback's coach. He didn't really have time to work with Brady. They bring AB in in the middle of the year, and he's obviously proven to be a pretty valuable piece to their offensive production. I would say 100% outside of like the Giants winning the Super Bowl as a wild card. If if the Buccaneers win the Super Bowl as a wild card, I think that would be the easily the best wild card team. But talent-wise, with th- pretty much three number one receivers on your team, with Evans, Godwin, and Antonio Brown. And then you have the number four overall pick from 2015 with Leonard Fournette backing up Ronald Jones. You have, uh, I think it's Keyshawn, Kayvon, um, can't remember his name, the third down back they have there. Um, Yeah, all over the place offensively. Defensively, they need help in the secondary. Uh, Dirk mentioned getting Devin White back at the linebacker position. That's going to be huge. They've had a very, uh, I guess, sound defensive line. But when it comes to that defensive back, that is what that is what is going to hold them back is the defensive backs. If they get lined up against the Packers in the NFC Championship, like you're looking at, you know, maybe 200 yards out of Devontae Adams. So, I mean, that's my thoughts on it. Go for it, Zach. Yeah, I just wanted to add another interesting fact to uh, Tom Brady's dominance throughout his career. Last week was actually the first time that he's played an away game on Wild Card Weekend, which is absolutely Holy mind shit. blowing to me. That just shows how dominant he's been. Wait, are you uh, serious? The first time, the, f- the first time he played an away game on Wild Card Weekend. Wow, that yeah, I mean that yeah. says a lot. I was actually kind of trying to think the last time he maybe even played a Wild Card game. To be honest, that's that's why it doesn't feel like a Wild Card team because you got Brady at under center and. A lot of these quarterbacks that are aging and, you know, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is having like a renaissance right now. He's coming back, but it's like a lot of these quarterbacks aging Brady's not really losing a step. You know, he's one of those guys that, that's lasting and, and playing at a very high level, despite him being what 45. Yeah. And, and Talking you know about I, um, their star receivers though, like Mike Evans, here's a stat line from November 9th, 2020, the last three games Mike Evans has had against Lattimore. Two targets, zero receptions, all three games. That is a matchup right there. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore can just take away Mike Evans, apparently. Yeah, Marshawn Lattimore may be shutting down Mike Evans, but the good thing is that, you know, they do have, like we said, those other elite receivers that are going to be making up the difference. I, I don't think, you know, regardless of taking away Mike Evans out of the game, you know, you still got Godwin going deep and you've still got Antonio Brown, who's now 
picked it up towards the end of the season. Honestly, I, I dropped him in fantasy halfway through the year because I didn't think he was going to be doing anything, especially with the other weapons they had. But it seems like he's really found his niche and he's found his like, you know, link up with Brady. Um, and then with the rest of the yeah. offense and uh, like Jacob was saying, playoff Lenny, you know, I, I think they've got plenty of weapons to definitely overcome that. I know they, they obviously lost it in the, in the regular season, but I think that now that, like you said, they figured it out. I think they're going to be, uh, they're going to be ready to go. Playoff Lenny, you're talking playoff Leonard Fournette. Oh yeah. Oh, and I also forgot to even mention Gronkowski too, like as a tight end on that team. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, you know, that guy, you know, one of the best tight ends to play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one guy up. on the Bucks as a tight end. Um, I do. Former Mass Singer. Or Mass Singer, Mass, Yeah, that's true. Maybe he can. He the can. White Tiger, again. bro. The White Tiger was he that's the first he was, one right? voted out on that show? No, he made it far. Everyone knew he couldn't sing, but he was just such a stage performer. He was just fun. It was fun to watch. And you knew it was Gronk because he had the stupid, like, cabbage patch moves, and he's, like, you know, grabbing his leg and just, like, swinging around. It's so funny. But, yeah, he's he's having a great year. Him and Brady are linking back up, and, and they're playing like they're, you know, young again. I like it. 